You think running more makes you fitter? Think again. Elite athletes know something you don't, and it's not what fitness influencers are selling you. What if I told you that the hardest workouts aren't always the ones that make you better? That some of the world's greatest endurance champions spend less time training than you do? And that the secret to superhuman lung capacity has nothing to do with grinding yourself into the ground every single day? Stay with me, because what you're about to discover will completely change how you think about getting fit. The last revelation is going to blow your mind. Welcome to a journey inside the hidden world of elite performance. Today we're pulling back the curtain on how Olympic athletes, Tour de France cyclists, and marathon champions actually build their legendary aerobic capacity. Prepare si para descubrir why everything you've been told about improving VO2 max is incomplete, and more importantly, why the methods that work for professionals might actually hurt your progress. This isn't theory from a textbook. This is the real science behind champions, and by the end, you'll understand exactly why your approach needs to change. Let me start with something that sounds crazy. Elite athletes training for VO2 max improvement spend up to 80% of their training time at intensities so low you could hold a conversation while doing them. Yes, you heard that right. While you're out there destroying yourself with high intensity intervals five days a week, thinking you're optimizing your fitness, the best athletes in the world are cruising at a pace that feels almost embarrassingly easy. This is called polarized training, and it's the foundation of every single successful endurance program at the elite level. Here's why it works, and why you're probably doing the opposite. When you train at very low intensities, you're building your aerobic base, the massive foundation of slow twitch muscle fiber, adaptations, mitochondrial density, and capillary networks that allow your body to use oxygen efficiently. This happens without accumulating fatigue, which means you can train more volume without breaking down. Then, and only then, do elite athletes add in those brutal high-intensity sessions, usually just once or twice per week, where they push into the red zone and force their cardiovascular system to expand its ceiling. The magic isn't in doing hard workouts constantly. The magic is in the contrast between extremely easy and extremely hard, with almost nothing in the moderate middle zone. But here's what you're probably doing instead. You're training in that middle zone, that purgatory of moderate intensity, where you're working too hard to build your aerobic base, but not hard enough to actually push your VO2 max higher. Every run feels like a challenge. Every session leaves you moderately tired. And month after month, you plateau because you're stuck in no man's land. Elite. Athletes avoid this zone like poison because they understand something fundamental about adaptation. Your body doesn't improve from the training itself. It improves from recovering from the training. And when everything you do sits in that medium hard range, you never recover enough to absorb the adaptations and you never go hard enough to create a strong stimulus. Now think with me. How often do you finish a workout feeling like you could have gone harder? Or worse, how often do you feel chronically tired but never actually faster? Comment now. Stuck in the middle, if this sounds familiar. Here's the second secret that separates champions from everyone else. Elite athletes obsess over something you've probably never measured, lactate threshold training. While VO2 max tells you the maximum amount of oxygen your body can use, lactate threshold is the intensity at which your body starts accumulating lactate faster than it can clear it. And here's the kicker. Your lactate threshold is a better predictor of endurance performance than VO2 max. Two athletes can have identical VO2 max scores, but the one with the higher lactate threshold will destroy the other in a race every single time. Why? Because lactate threshold determines the pace you can sustain for long periods without fatiguing. Elite athletes dedicate specific training blocks to pushing this threshold higher through tempo runs, threshold intervals, and cruise intervals that sit just below that tipping point. These sessions are uncomfortable but controlled, usually lasting 20 to 40 minutes at a pace where you can speak only a few words at a time. The adaptation here is profound. Your body learns to produce energy more efficiently, clear lactate faster, and buffer the acidic byproducts that cause that burning sensation in your muscles. But here's where you go wrong again. You probably skip these sessions entirely because they're not sexy. 
they don't feel as intense as sprints and they're not as relaxing as easy runs. So they get lost in your program and your lactate threshold stays exactly where it's always been. Meanwhile, elite athletes are systematically raising the ceiling on their sustainable pace, which is what actually wins races and creates functional fitness. The third revelation is even more surprising. Elite athletes use something called live high, train low altitude strategies. And while you can't exactly replicate living at elevation, the principle behind it is accessible to everyone. When you expose your body to lower oxygen environments, even through specific breathing techniques or altitude simulation, you trigger the production of more red blood cells and hemoglobin, essentially upgrading your oxygen delivery system. Professional teams spend millions on altitude camps and hypoxic tents, but the underlying mechanism teaches us something valuable. Your body adapts to stress by becoming more efficient. Elite athletes also incorporate breath hold, training, inspiratory muscle training, and deliberate nasal breathing during easy sessions to create a mild hypoxic stimulus. These methods force your respiratory system to work harder and adapt. But you're probably breathing through your mouth on every single run, never challenging your respiratory muscles, and missing out on a free adaptation that costs nothing. Research shows that even simple practices like nasal-only breathing during easy aerobic work can improve oxygen efficiency and CO2, tolerance over time. The lesson here isn't that you need to move to Colorado. It's that small, deliberate stresses applied consistently create compound adaptations that most people completely overlook. You believe that more is always better? Or are you starting to see that smarter beats harder? Write in the comments, smarter not harder. Now let's talk about what really holds you back, and it's not your workouts, it's your recovery. Elite athletes treat recovery with the same intensity they treat training. Sleep is non-negotiable, typically 9 to 10 hours per night because that's when growth hormone peaks and muscle repair happens. Nutrition is precisely time to replenish glycogen and support protein synthesis. Active recovery days include massage, stretching, compression therapy, and even cold exposure to manage inflammation. They monitor heart rate variability to know when their nervous system has recovered enough to handle another hard session. And perhaps most importantly, they periodize their training into blocks with built-in recovery weeks where volume and intensity drop significantly. This allows supercompensation, where your body bounces back stronger than before. But you? You probably sleep six hours, eat randomly, skip rest days because you feel guilty, and wonder why you're always tired and never improving. Here's the brutal truth. Without recovery, training is just damage. You're breaking down tissue without giving it time to rebuild stronger. Elite. Athletes know that adaptation happens in rest, not in work. The workout is just the stimulus. The magic happens when you sleep, eat, and allow your body to respond. If you're not recovering like a professional, you'll never perform like one, no matter how hard you train. Let me bring this full circle with one final insight that ties everything together. Elite athletes have coaches, teams, and systems that enforce discipline and optimize their approach. You're probably winging it, following, random advice from social media, and hoping something sticks. The difference isn't just knowledge, it's implementation. It's having a structured plan that progresses logically, respects recovery, targets specific adaptations, and adjusts based on feedback. Most people fail not because they don't work hard enough, but because they work hard randomly without strategy or progression. Champions succeed because every session has a purpose. Every week builds on the last, and every adaptation is earned through intelligent design, not just effort. So here's your takeaway. Stop training like you're trying to prove something every single workout. Start training like an elite athlete. Easy when it should be easy, hard when it should be hard, and always with purpose and recovery built into the plan. Your VO2 max will thank you, your performance will skyrocket, and you'll finally break through that plateau that's been haunting you. Click no video na tela y continue esa jornada to discover the exact workout protocols elite athletes use. Deixe seu comentário telling me which of these secrets surprised you most. Se inscreva no canal for more science-backed training revelations. Curta este video if you're ready to train smarter.
Now go out there and become the athlete you were meant.